Hello world, Noah here, and welcome to Java to Kotlin. In this video series, we're going to take a look at the Kotlin programming language through the lens of someone who is proficient in Java. Now, in case you don't know, Kotlin is a language that runs on the JVM, which is the same platform that runs Java itself. So the language runs just like Java does, and it's interoperable with Java. So if you have Java code, you can also use Kotlin code with it. Uh, but Kotlin takes a very different approach to uh, the language and how the code works um, and how it ends up looking. Now, you've probably heard of some other alternatives like uh, Groovy and Scala and Clojure, for example, and there are certainly others. But Kotlin is the latest attempt uh, to create a new language that runs alongside Java but improves upon the language. And there are a couple of key differences um, with Kotlin that I'll mention quickly. First of all, Kotlin is an officially supported language for Android. So the official program for uh, developing on Android is Android Studio. And Android Studio is developed uh, in part by JetBrains. It runs on the IntelliJ um, platform. And JetBrains is the company that created Kotlin. Uh, so support for Kotlin is built into Android Studio. It's as easy as just checking a button when you're in Android Studio, and I've recently been doing some Android development work with Kotlin, and I have to say that if I were forced to use Java for the Android development, it would be a lot more painful um, of an experience. Because one thing that Kotlin does, and this is something that a lot of JVM languages uh, do, is they try to get rid of some of the boilerplate in Java. You know, you have to write a lot of code in Java just to get a little bit to happen. Um, lots of getters and setters and methods and, and all of that. And basically these languages try to make the code a little bit more elegant and neat and make you write a little bit less. Uh, the Kotlin language can also be targeted to the browser. So you can export Kotlin uh, code into JavaScript and run it in the browser. I personally haven't played around with this yet. Um, but it will it would allow you to write you know for a website your front end and back end in the same language sort of like you can do with JavaScript if you're using Node.js. So in this series again we're going to take a look at Kotlin through the lens of someone who knows Java. Basically going to compare uh, here's how you would write something in Java and here's how you would write the same thing in Kotlin. Here's why Kotlin is different, and here's maybe why Kotlin is better. And of course, it's totally up to you as to whether you actually think it's better or not, but personally speaking, I enjoy Kotlin a lot. Now, in this first video, we're going to, of course, write Hello World, and you'll see quickly that it's already very different. Now, in order to get started with Kotlin, you can try it online by going to kotlinlang.org and clicking the Try Kotlin button. If you happen to have IntelliJ installed, it's built into uh, one of the later versions. Certainly the latest version. If you're a couple versions behind, you should probably uh, still have it already. You can also use it in Eclipse. You can use it through um, Terminal or Command Prompt, um, however you want to use it. But I personally am going to be using it through IntelliJ IDEA. Because of course, IntelliJ is created by JetBrains, the same company that made Kotlin, so you're going to get the best support by far using IntelliJ. Now, when you open up IntelliJ, you're going to want to make sure that the Kotlin plugin is enabled. I like to micromanage my plugins, so you'll see that most of them are disabled. Um, chances are all of your plugins are enabled, and Kotlin is installed by default, uh, so you should have it. And you want to also make sure that it's updated to the latest version, which again should happen automatically in the background. Um, at the time of this video, it's 1.2, um, but of course that changes as Kotlin is a fairly new language and a lot of work is currently being done on it. Now to get started, we're going to create a new project, and we're going to choose to create a Kotlin project. And we want a Kotlin project that targets the JVM, not JavaScript, because uh, we're going to be working in the Java component. And then we're going to give the project a name. I'm going to call this project Hello World. Project SDK, I have Java 9 installed, you can use Java 8, you can use Java 7, 6, whatever version you want to use. Because in the end, your Kotlin code is going to be compiled into Java, and then it's going to be run. And finally, I'm just going to hit finish right there, and our project will pop up. So as you can see, it added all of these uh, Kotlin 
jar files to enable the language to work. And this project is now set up to work in Kotlin. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, Kotlin file, which I'm going to call main. And you'll see that the extension is kt. So it's going to be main.kt. And now we're going to write uh, hello world, nice and simple. The first thing that you'll note in Kotlin is that you don't need to put everything inside of a class. In Java, every single piece of code needs to be either inside of a class, an interface, or an enumerator. And interfaces and enumerators are really sort of like classes. Um, but in Kotlin, you can write code that's not inside of a class, sort of like in Python and many other languages. But we do need to put our code inside of a function. To declare a function in uh, Kotlin, we're just going to use the word fun. It's not going to be public static void or any of that stuff, just fun. We're going to call it main, and then we're going to put our parentheses, and now we need our parameters. Now, if you know from Java, you would write string array args, but in Kotlin, it's just a little bit different. You start by writing the name of the variable, then a colon, and then the type of the variable. But arrays aren't written like this with a string and two brackets. That's a little bit different. Basically, Kotlin specifies an array class that looks a lot like array list. So array, and then we need to give it a type, which is going to be string. And then we're going to use our curly braces there. So here's our main function right here. I'm going to make this code nice and big, maybe not that big. But you can see we're declaring a function. It's called main. And the parameter, the one parameter is called args, and it's an array of type string. So you can see already that this clearly looks very different than Java, but it has the same idea. You know, we're creating a main method, or in this case, a main function. And so now we want to go ahead and write hello world. Uh, but in Kotlin, you don't actually have to write system.out.println. You can actually just write print ln or print. I'm going to use println, and I'm going to write hello world. The nice thing about Kotlin is that a lot of these uh, important functions are already available to you. So you don't have to do system.out.println. You can just write println, and it's already made available to you in a global scope. And you'll also notice that I don't need to put a semicolon. Semicolons are not required in Kotlin unless you're having more than one statement on the same line, which you really don't want to do. You can put a semicolon if you want, but it is going to tell you that you should get rid of it because there's no need for it. Now, in order to run this, we're going to go ahead and you can either right click and say run. You could create a run configuration, or you can actually just hit the little K button right here and hit run main. And you'll see it's going to go ahead and build. So it basically created the run configuration for the main file. It built the code and now it ran and it said hello world. And if I run it again, you'll see that it'll run a little bit faster the second time. It's still a little bit slow to get started because again, this is running on the JVM, but once it gets started, it's going to be pretty fast. And after you let it run for the first time and generate all the files and figure everything out, it'll run a little bit faster. Now, if we take a look inside of the out folder right here, you'll see that it outputs a .class file. And this .class file is just the same as a regular old Java class file. It's going to decompile it as if uh, it were a Kotlin class, but if you actually looked at the source code of it, if you decompiled it like Java, you would notice that it's actually just plain old Java code. Because that's really all that Kotlin does. It provides you this other syntax with more features in it, but at the end of the day, it's all going to be compiled back into Java code and then it's going to run on the JVM just like Java does. Now, some of this might have been a little bit confusing, and I didn't go into so much detail, especially with you know this sort of um, different look for, for uh, parameters and the array and all of that stuff. But in future videos, we're going to do more comparisons, and it'll start to be more clear. I just wanted to quickly show off how to make uh, a main uh, a uh, Hello World program in Kotlin, just to give you a little taste of how, what it's like to work in Kotlin, and what Kotlin looks like. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment if what you want to learn, and continue on in this series to learn more about Kotlin, which is, in my opinion, 
a great language, and definitely something that you want to consider knowing if you like to program in Java. Thanks for watching.